in 2006, I set out to Antarctica with artist John Quigley to create an environmental image to advocate climate change on behalf of Global Green USA. Hey, John. Hey, nice Sebastian. To see you, nice to see you. Yeah. I, um, so I wanted to revisit with you the, uh, the experience, this extraordinary experience we had in Antarctica and creating this, uh, the SOS image. John and I first collaborated on a project in the Arctic a year earlier. John had assembled a thousand Inuit kids and elders on the Arctic sea ice to send a message from the top of the world. They feel as though the Arctic is the early warning barometer for the planet. So they wanted to send out a message to the world. The canary in the coal mine. Canary in the coal mine. So it had a small little Inuktitut word that said, listen. Right. We wanted to echo this call from the north, this time by heading south to the other pole. It made sense to go to Antarctica and from these very powerful symbolic places send a message. So on behalf of Global Green, we led an expedition to the White Continent to send an SOS to the world. First we had to board the Ice Lady Patagonia, our home for the next three weeks, and then face the infamous Drake Passage. The Drake Shake the or Drake the Drake shake. Lake, yeah. yeah the Drake. You pray for the Drake Lake. <laughs> and you generally get the Drake, the Drake shake. shake. Exactly. It was basically three days of being launched about. Incredible. Uh, uh, just being launched about and nothing to do. Like I remember laying in the bed and basically for hours just I'd go up like a foot off the bed like six inches towards the wall, six inches this way, and then back onto the bed and down. I, it hadn't even really occurred to me that we could roll completely. I thought the ship just always sort of self-stabilized. I, I think it, actually we rolled 52 degrees, and I said, well, at what point would we actually capsize? And I remember Carlos saying, 53. <laughs> <laughs> but when we arrived in Antarctica, I was awed by its beauty and scale. Nature has a, has a real strong way of speaking to one if one listens. Uh, it's a very meditative and a real communion relationship with, with the environment. As a photographer, I'm partial to how the light affects uh, shadows. and the, the sea there can be like literally like a mirrored surface. It's just so quiet, so still, and so vast that when you get those moments and you have a seascape, like a frozen piece of ice that has been shaped by the wind and the sea and the rain, and, and it sits in this incredibly quiet sea that is mirrored-like, the impact of what you see there is really based on, on this, you know, this extraordinary natural beauty. To accomplish the image that John and I wanted to create, first we had to locate an iceberg. See, every time we approached an iceberg uh, in that journey, we, we would get excited. There was this knot in the stomach of anxiety. <laughs> Is this the one? Any time yeah. an iceberg was in the distance. The key that I was always looking for, is it a good canvas? Right. And then the second was, could we access it? After a few frustrated attempts, we found our iceberg and got to work. Yeah, the one thing about Antarctica is that it is uh, very unpredictable and the best laid plans, right? Exactly. Uh, these were certainly not the easiest conditions we've worked in. You can't really tell from this angle so much, but it's a fairly steep, steep, ang steep yeah, angle. Probably about uh, 10 degrees or so, maybe. Maybe, maybe yeah. even a little more than that. And it's obviously, it's an iceberg, so it's very slick. There was still a lot of excitement there. The, the, the ship is, was extremely close to the ice. I'm on top of the, the, uh, the mast. You laying out the image. We actually decided to put some ice picks in the, in the ice because people were sliding. Right. I remember because the folks in the orange suits, for some reason, these orange suits were just completely, they had no friction it was like whatsoever. Plastic, yeah. Yeah, and so they couldn't even stay on the slope no at all. No traction whatsoever. They couldn't even like yeah. dig in anyway. So um, we had a rope so they could all hold onto the rope to cling to it. Right. So they're actually clinging for their lives right there. But soon, the image began to take shape. It's a funny thing. You know, there was two teenagers 
in that image. We had, what, 13 nations represented. So, but this, of course, is, that's the, the least amount of people that you utilize in an image. I mean, for you, it's probably easier to implement this than a lot of those extraordinary images that I've seen you do in the past. Well, that, that, that's true. Usually it's, it's a question of, you know, thousands of people in an intricate, detailed imagery. So I look at this sometimes, and it looks like a, a kid drew it, you know? And yet I know what it took for the people to be on that ice. And it's just, it has a power in a completely different way. And your photography is just spectacular. In some ways, it's just, you know, sort of scratched. It's like humanity scratching it into, you know, the, the lone iceberg floating away as our world is melting. And there's a poignancy there. How you feel? Fantastic. It's frozen to the bone. Although I am a lover of nature and my engagement in uh, environmental issues has a lot more to do with, with people than it has to do with my love of nature because nature does what it has to do. Nature will carry on and do what it's doing. Really what is at stake is our ability to survive on this planet. Well, I'm extremely proud of it. I think it's, it's truly, I mean, in a word that is often used, overused in photography, I think it's truly an iconic image.